or sound better. So yeah, let's try. Uh, let me uh, change the ASIO to the FL Studio one. Also, this output should be set it properly. So let me play the track right now. You know, right before this stream, I just you know I just played myself the track how it sounds, and I'm still not happy about these plugs. So I just the only thing I did there is that I turned I put down this this uh, serum plug just one octave. You know, I put it one octave down, and that's all. So everything else I will be doing live. So playing in three D one now. And so on and so on. So the good thing is that um, this Chrome killer uh, works. So uh, this is the first time I was able to play the whole track without any crackling and disturbing voices. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad you like it. You know, I, I do like it as well. Uh, honestly, the like the the plan of mine was to create something more like. You know energetic and hard but I, I don't mean energetic but harder you know some really like uh, club killer or something like that but uh, this works just this this works just fine and uh, I feel like um, I'm quite good at creating these like uh, a bit easier tunes and that is great so you know why shall I push it to, to a different direction if I if I can do uh, you know these uh, these like future house something stuff so uh, first of all let's let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at the, at the plugs when I'm giving feedbacks I'm giving feedbacks uh, in like one hour uh, at the at the like second half of the stream uh, right now yeah yeah better at like 2030 not not exactly at 20 but 2030 I think that's it you know what let me just do one quick uh, like update so mm, your messages uh, stay a bit longer in the in the Twitch feed because I, I'm afraid I, I'm, I can miss some of these doesn't matter what genre we send for feedback yeah absolutely not you know just send me whatever you want you can even send me like uh, sorry for that which alerts. You can even send me like uh, your projects or something. You know, it doesn't have to be mastered or whatever. So um, right here, I'm going to stream. No, yeah, no. Uh, sorry, I'm just setting the um, chat box. Here it is. So I'll leave your messages here for like I don't know, forty seconds maybe. Let's let's keep it on thirty. 33 why not that could help yeah and that's 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 all so right now i'm going to work on the on the plugs so let's check them out you know what let's keep this uh how it is now for the first break and let's let's take a look at the second one <clears throat> maybe I will find a better way uh, for the breakdown or better sound so I will just then uh, use it for the first breakdown but uh, this sounds quite good and I don't want to spend like half a stream on creating better better plugs <clears throat> this is the bass yeah so when the drop ends
I maybe can do it a bit longer. I mean, the drop. Uh, there are kicks <laughs> right there. Uh, so I will just copy and paste it in here. And what I will also do is that I will add there um, some like white noise uplifter just to uh, graduate the atmosphere a bit at the end of the drop. Uh, I, I, was, I would like to have a one with sidechain already applied on. Uh, for that purpose, I will go to this bigger than ever FX Essentials 2. Damn, where are you? Okay, I will try this one. Yeah, this could do, could do good. So. This is cool, and also one other effect, maybe this riser, but I will have to uh, sidechain it because this way, how it is now, it will, it will fight with the kick. So <clears throat> you have to even, you know, when you are like putting this this type of uplift uplifters to your tracks, you have to uh, sidechain it because other way, um, just won't sound that good. Mainly where there are, you know, drums in the play. You can leave it in the breakdown with, with no sidechain effect applied, but once you put it also to the drop, be sure to, to at least try to sidechain it. If it won't sound better, then leave it how it is, but you know, at least try it. This is cool, maybe. Oh, what? I, I missed that one synth. Let's see how it sounds also with this synth. I'm not sure about him. That's cool. Let's keep it. Keep him there. So, yeah, the drop ends. Just like that. Uh, we can keep the beat still, still rocking for a while. Because... Uh, it's just another variation you can add, you can or you cannot, but I feel like I should just keep it playing for another like eight bars, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. I will maybe add uh, some extra sound in this section because I feel like it's quite empty. Just when the bass plays only. Um. Hmm. Yeah, let me think. Any ideas, guys? Uh, it's this guy. I, I, I remember that this one sounded pretty good, but I had I, I wanted to change the melody a bit. So let's do it right now. I've created a duplicate version of this Nexus. I will make it a bit louder, and I will take this uh, lead melody right there, and I will use it as a, as a ghost note for the damn. What's going on? For the for this backing lead, yeah. It could be. It's 
cool, right? Let's keep it. Maybe put a low pass filter on the, yeah, on the, you know, the, the message is already gone, rage, rage mode. I'm sorry for that. I, I didn't find it. I didn't find time to read it. Okay, but I, I believe you like this synth, so let's keep it like that. Maybe put the low pass filter on the lead synth after the drop ends and add high plug with the chords melody. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, low pass filter on the lead synth, a low pass filter. Uh, I think I got it, but uh, yeah, I can try it. Let me see. <laughs> Oh, this is cool. Uh, I don't. I don't think like plugs will do well in here. So. Yeah, it could be. It could sound did good, but I already found a different way. So sorry for not. Yeah, but great idea. Thank you for it, man. Maybe I'll, I will use it for the second drop, I guess. But this is this is really nice. I mean, the drop ends or the part of the drop ends. Short fail right here. So, uh, here is a kickstart applied. I don't want it right now. And also, what's this? Yeah, this is wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was all about. Yeah, I will. I will delete these plugs and put their only like. Uh, what's this plug? I'm not. Sure. I, I completely forgot about it or didn't I? No, it's good. I will put there only this pad and maybe some like FX sounds to the beginning of the second drop to make it more uh, cinematic, make it more deep yeah and that was also the idea i will add some um, percussion in here that will be very nice let me add one more um uplifter to this part of the drop and then we will be creating some kashmir <laughs> kashmir percussion loops I will rotate to the same mixer channel. Uh, maybe add some clear upper harmonics to make it a bit brighter. Uh, upper harmonics to make it brighter. You mean uh, upper harmonics on the lead synth? Uh, I don't want to double it. Or yeah, maybe I, that's a good idea actually. It could be it, but I will only add the upper harmonics. I will use different synth though. Hey, hey, DJ, unnamed. <laughs> that's a cool nick. That could be it. Um, yeah, I got it. 
But I will only add it to, uh, not to these nodes, but to these glide nodes. And I will make it, how does it sound? How does it sounds now? This preset is called dancing. This preset is called cream, but it sounds actually the same. But you know, never mind. Let's try it one octave higher, like this. Ah, maybe not. But you know what? Let's try to play them together and see. Ah, it's not good. I, I will find a. This could be it, but uh, we'll go back to the C5 octave. Maybe like... Nah, it wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be that good. I mean the harmonics like at like a quarter or I'm not sure how to call it, like create a chord from it. it, it it's not what I was expecting to sound like, so I will keep it just like that. Okay, back to the C5 for sure. Yeah, just the simple layer is doing Pretty nice job. And right now, right there is a place for uh, cinematic percussion. And Double A Production didn't release any pack with uh, this kind of percussion. I mean, I did. Uh, I released a pack, but there are just a few of them. Uh, this um, not this one for Soundspot, but the uh, Future Bass Essentials uh, that you will find also on on Splice. But you know, here are the oh, here are them. Maybe I can use these because they sound pretty cool. one was good so I will just leave them slowly uh, but I will also use some other libraries I guess because I need also some snares and stuff yeah that's a cool idea leave the chat on leave the chat on my mobile phone so let's try it bitch.com uh, slash reddit roman that's a great idea. Thank you. And I will see what you are writing me right there. Mm -hmm. Poo -poo, I hope. But I'm not sure. Where shall I see the... Uh -huh. Never mind. Let's, let's do this. Oh, too loud. You know what? I will probably create a loop in the full strength and then just uh, slowly, I will slowly build it, build it up. Hmm, no, I will go to this, where are you? I mean it's, uh, s where is, where are these, oh it's orchestra? And right here it's, it's the library is called apocalyptic percussion. And here you will find some really amazing stuff. And what I also have right here is a library with already like created, <clears throat> sorry for that, drum loops, doll loops. I'm in 128 BPM, so I will go to uh, this section. I don't want to use Kashmir packs 
honestly because it's just so easy to like open uh Kashmir pack and uh, work with it I rather use really my own packs and double a production ones because uh I created some of them and I really like them and I don't like to use other companies that much Cool. I mean, I will I will leave this uh, this this loop just for the back noise for the really like groovy one. But I will add some like really um, hard can be said hard uh, orchestral percussion. I mean, there are tons of them. Yeah, I was, I'll download the Twitch app for the next time. I mean, I'm still upgrading the the whole Twitch process. Uh, I believe you you love this uh, graphics. Uh, it's really cool. But uh, also here are some. Uh, where are you? Here is in the solo section in the splash, I believe, or not? Uh, there should be like um, symbol uh, rolls or something like that. Yeah, it should be. I'm not sure where it is. There are like, as you can see, there are like thousand sections, and and each is divided into even more sections. So it's not cool. Yeah, nothing for me. One is better, but I'm still looking for um, ensemble. No. Oh, here it is. This one is cool. I mean, it's very distorted or limited, but it's okay. And uh, what I also want to try is to find a doll, uh, doll like, uh, <laughs> sorry, doll roll, or some bass bass drum roll or something like that. But this is crazy. There are like th thousands of these sounds. So I will probably uh, skip this one, or you know what? Let's try. Oh, here you go. This is cool. I mean, these like rolls are doing amazing job in in your tracks. So I will just drag and drop a few of them into my playlist. Uh, so here is a guy asking me about Ableton, about switching to Ableton from FL Studio. And another guy, uh, where did I get these uh, rolls? I'm not sure. I mean, this it's a it's a sample pack. Obviously, this is this one is called Apocalyptic Percussion. But you know, I'm I'm renaming these fa these uh, packs for myself. I mean, I have this one for more than a year, I guess, or something like that. I just you know uh, I just downloaded it somewhere. I bought it, but I'm not sure where already, and I'm not sure even if if this is the real name, like. Uh, the apocalyptic percussion should be, but this epic doll, I'm not sure. I just, you know, bought it somewhere. And about a question, uh, here was a guy asking me uh, if is it hard or easy to go from FL Studio to Ableton after five, after five years of producing in FL Studio. And uh, the, quest the answer of mine, uh, what I would answer on, on that is that it's quite, it's quite like simple. Uh, it's all, it's also simple to go from Ableton to FL Studio or from Ableton to Logic Pro because once you once you know the process and how it all works that you need to write some something uh, to your MIDI section and then you know uh, 
play the play the sound or the uh, the plugin will play the melody and then you have to affect it and that's actually all you need so Ableton is good it really has a perfect sound but as I'm always saying it doesn't have that good workflow it doesn't have uh, that like user-friendly interface this playlist this coast notes everything but the sound is the sound the uh, sound you you will be able to get from Ableton without any like extreme uh, processing and affecting is is better than FL Studio I mean it, it's a shame but it's better but I believe uh, FL Studio will do just you know some some update soon and uh, they will match this sound but for now FL Studio has the better output sound but oh, sorry the Ableton one has the better output sound but FL Studio has extremely more user-friendly everything i mean it's so fun to work in fl studio and it's so terrible for me to work in ableton because uh i just i just, I just tried to to write a melody in there once and it was so horrible experience that i never tried it again i'm only or i was only using it for like mixing purposes and something something like that and you know when when some, a track from scratch here that would kill me man someone uh, sent me the ableton template i've worked in it but creating, how do you get good non-cheesy horse? Yeah, yeah, good horse. It's quite hard to create. Uh, I'm using sample packs. You know, I'm I'm telling it all the time because um, the sample packs by Double Production just have everything I need. So I just take the melody, I recreate it a bit by adding a top lead or something like that. Uh, so yeah. I'm using it you know I'm not like music theoretic so I'm not able to or I am able but it takes me so long to create a cool chord melody that I better uh, rather use it from a pack and create it or recreate it as, as I, I want um, yeah your drums never sound good with the melody that's probably because you are not using sidechain and uh, you also have to really pick the good drum samples you know just go, go through our samples from splice and just pick really those you really like it's so easy like that uh what do i think about logic pro i think it's a pretty cool um it's a pretty cool like you know program uh for logic uh for uh apple users uh for mac users uh i never tried to work in it I just saw some tutorials and uh, I think it's it's just you know it's just cool Kelvin Harris is working in it uh, this guy the one from Pro protocol what's it? yeah Nicky Romero I just saw a tutorial uh, from him uh, like yesterday I mean it's uh, I'm not sure about this plugin it it reminds me FL studio a bit because the output the sound quality uh, is is actually or is is very similar to the FL Studio one, and yeah, I just you know they, they have some really cool like plugins, the internal plugins in FL Studio. Uh, I have to do my homework, but I'm listening to Reddit Roman. <laughs> yeah, that's the better better way to spend your day than doing uh, homeworks. Um, uh every time i add something to the to the track it sounds amazing thank you man uh how long did it take well uh it took me uh took me nine years for now so uh but i'm really i'm sitting in the front of this computer on this chair for like i don't know 10 you know from six to ten hours Per day and I'm still you know mixing packs I'm mixing templates I'm watching tutorials I'm listening to SoundCloud I'm you know I'm living with it I'm just this, this part of me so uh, I'm really glad I'm able to create some like projects <laughs> but it really you know takes you a lot of time or at least me it, it took me a lot of time uh, but you know guys let's let's skip the chat for now and let's continue creating this drum loop sorry for for the interruption yeah this was the this was the drum drum roll
Oh. Where is the sim? Oh, right here. Come on. Okay, this 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 percussion from mine pack is pretty like sharp. It's very useful for future base a drop and everything, but not for this like deep uh, emotional type of breakdown. So I will probably just find a different um, doll drum, low one for example. It's too hard. Oh, wait a second. This one is cool. So I will I will use this one. And right there I will use another uh, just short crescendo. Like this. I will edit it a bit in in Edison because I want to have this like nice fade fade in effect here. What I did there is just that I applied just a shortcut for fade in. You can find it anywhere you want in the Edison. Yeah, it could be it. So I will leave this uh, percussion loop in the very background of the, of the sound. I will open it slowly by um, a low pass filter. Oh, and I will also save the project. Boom. So yeah, automating the filter envelope. Can you show that again, how you edited that FX? Yeah, I can do it. So I took, you know, I took this sample, put it to the Edison, and then you have to like select the part you want to even, you want to fade in or fade out. And you can go to this section and select the fade in or fade out effect. I, I, I was doing this fade in, fade in one, which means that, you know, it, go, it will go from zero to like 100% of the signal. And as you can see, the shortcut is, CTRLF, C CTRL plus F, so I just did it, you know, by hitting these two keys or these two things on my keyboard, and uh, you know, it was it was done easily like this. So that's that's it. Have you ever saved in FL but before it saved, FL crashed? Yeah, many times, you know. Uh, also during my past streams. I I didn't have uh, the autosave set properly, so uh, some of the things I was creating just you know got got lost uh, during the live stream. So I have to recreate it. It's just you know it's just part of FL Studio, and everyone everyone know it. <laughs> Yeah, Saturn did it. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Uh, I think uh, it, it it isn't that brilliant, but uh, I think it sounds cool. This stream, I am more talking than creating sounds. I hope you are okay with that. Hmm. This, these are claps and some kicks, so I don't need them. I will get rid of them. But, and what's, what's this? Boom, boom, boom. Delete everything. And find this arpeggio. Let's try it. Uh, there should be a filter envelope for the arpeggio. And here comes the messy part of the project where <laughs> I'm not naming anything because I want to save some time and I'm too lazy for it but then I'm not able to find uh, what belongs to what but I believe this this foot no I'm not sure uh, 
Oh, this this one. That's cool. So this is the uh, cutoff filter envelope for the arpeggio. So I will use it, and I will use it just like that. I will go from the absolute so zero to to like half of the amount, but you know, just at, at the end of the of this part of the breakdown to just like slowly introduce the arpeggio sound and see how it goes. Yeah, I really don't need those samples. Uh, get out from my project. So, yeah. What do you have OBS set to in... Oh, sorry, the message is gone. <laughs> you have to send it to me once again. Looks like there is there's no. What do you have OBS set to in desktop audio? Always set mine at minus three. Uh, I I just left it as it is. I guess that means just zero dB. <laughs> uh, I never thought about it. So these are this is the plug bus bus channel and I will just put the filter on it. You are going to master? Yeah, sure, I will master it. I do maintain a loud mix makes my mixes lack energy. Uh, I maintain to just you know make the sounds really powerful. Those ones that uh, needs to be powerful. And at the end when when I finish the like mixing section, it already have to sound good otherwise uh, I need to fix it you know you cannot like uh, wait to the mastering part of the process and like believe that it will be fixed there because it won't so I am right now I am filtering the plugs Are there anywhere in my project the super saw sounds? I believe I already deleted them. It's a pity. Yeah, never mind. I will. I, will, I won't put them in here because uh, I will do something different. Uh huh. Okay, that could be it and right there I will already bring a part of, um, of drop melody and see how it goes. I will probably just uh, put there this, uh, this acoustic strength sound. Uh, I will filter it obviously because I don't want to or I want it to start from really low frequencies so I will just Put this um, filter envelope here and see. Mm, cool. Yeah, this sounds good. I will I will delete this percussion and I will put there this this like mini drum loop that I have created for the first part of the or for the first breakdown. And also maybe I will just copy and paste there the FX samples because they work just just well for the first part of the drop. So why not use them also for the second part? Um yeah, one big mess. Thank you. 
That's cool. Uh, right now I'm going to just copy and paste the drop and I will see if I will be able to bring some more elements to the second drop to make it like different. Uh, boom. S click, another S click. But right, oh, here I am. Cool, cool. So, uh, Let's copy and paste the drop here. And it's like that. Let's see how this sounds. Saved. Maybe this uh, like uh, layer lead sounds a bit loud to me. Really? I mean, this spire is the one that I'm using for a bass sound. <laughs> I'm using it the same way also for lead. That's why it sounded so weird to me. Maybe get some sampled vocal and blur it together and make it download out of it, Roman. Yeah, that's a great idea. I will maybe add some like vocal chops in here. Why don't you release the tracks you make? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not sure if... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I never thought, of, thought about it, so... <laughs> Okay, I will maybe try to send it to Hexagon if, if you think, <laughs> that would be cool. I'm not sure what LID means, spinning, yeah sure, you know what, revealed, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's play the whole like second breakdown and see how it sounds. I think I already should uh, put there some uh, rights uh, because uh, you know rights have to be in in every second drop. I <laughs> will uh, try it and see. Hmm. Rights, rights, symbols, rights here. Oh, 
Okay, cool. I will add some pets to, to the second drop. It's a cool idea. I will side chain also these rides. And uh, that could help. Let's try it. Yeah, it sounds good. Actually, it... yeah, this one is better. And I will side chain in just just a bit less. I don't want to lose that much punch. Okay, so the second breakdown. Yeah, they are pitched already, but not these rides, but these rides are pitched. I mean, the ones that are also in the first breakdown. So, add some pets, right? There are pets, but they are not playing, are not playing that loud, so... Nexus! <laughs> Nexus! Saves me again. But, uh, which pet? Let's go to this Electro House Lead Expansions. Expansion. Go to Pet Sections. These are pets? I mean, that's not a pet. Yeah. Oh, screw it, I will use maybe some strings right there. And these crazy sounds. This could be cool. Or I can try to create a cool like strings, string sound in contact or use some contact libraries. But that would again I guess I guess that would crash my FL Studio so or because of that would crash my FL Studio, so I won't try it rather. But let's, let's do some chord progression here. Another follower. Hey Max Vidder, thank you for following me. Ooh yeah. In this changes of course, are just very quick. Hey, what about creating these? Uh, <laughs> I mean, this sounds cool as it is. As a solo element, but I just like the same. D -d -d. No. This is nice. Maybe it will also work for the track, but I guess it won't. But you know, I just have to try it because I like it. I like the like to do 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 do. Yeah, contact library and thank you, David Records. Thank you. Uh, I'm really glad you like the track.
um strings library contact uh there are some that i really like uh i'm not sure which ones let me save the project and open another one just to load a contact 5 in here and i will i will show you what uh i will show you what uh, i'll show you what contact library i mean uh, i believe it's called simple something I really love these the simple BI one. It's a cool library, really is. Uh, it's it's from Project Sum, I think, or at least this one, the Orchestra Essentials. One of these are from Project Sum, and these are my favorite ones. And this Albion ones are just you know they're they are killing it so hard. They are amazing. They have these um, low brass sounds, and they sound just great. What's wrong with you? <laughs> this should be A sharp. And this should be B, am I right? I'm not. What's this? It's A sharp also. And this one? C no oh, F. <laughs> I'm the biggest I'm the biggest uh melody creator ever. Yeah. Let's try how it sounds. I I believe it will sound like shit, but anyway I I have to try it. <laughs> uh, D sharp, you're saying on the second bar, top two K chord, make the top knot D sharp. Mm -hmm. D sharp, like that. Anyway, I don't think it sounds cool. It sounds like from from Hobbit cinema movie. Maybe I I should use some different preset. Right. You know what? Yeah, we will we will go orchestral right now. I will layer this this synth by uh, this sound by another strings one. This is cool. So what I will do here is that I will layer it and uh, for this cello sound I will only leave the low notes. Maybe trying doing staccato strings that play the chord similar to what a lot progressive house does. Yeah. Huh, no, I don't need staccato there. I believe I like this London strings. I didn't. This one is great, but I will release the attack a bit. Yeah, let's. You know, I'm using the sampler. Uh, the sample is just to put there, 
you know put a melody, melody because they are not playing i'm just using it for save the save the midi loop so i i can easily just copy and paste it from there and i want to delete these short notes and only leave it for the cello one A lot of clicking right sorry that i'm asking but i'm here sometime i never heard where are you from i guess the roman came from easter nationalities holland mate <laughs> i live but i'm not czech czech republic yeah yeah i am i'm not from i'm not dutch i mean me being dutch that would be cool but no only only every, everyone from spinning is Dutch, not me. Yes. Uh, now, guys, uh, you heard what's happening in there. Let me know. If I shall continue with these strings because I, I don't feel like it it flows well with the with the track um, atmosphere, but let me know if it sounds good, and I will I will try to make it sound better. And if not, I will just you know get rid of these strings and just put there something more appropriate. So um, I will wait for your messages. Um. <laughs> I'm not from Dutch. Yeah, cool. Yeah, not too big fan of the strings. Me neither. Uh, you're from Poland, that's cool. Volume automation. Uh, yeah, but I'm speaking about the idea of the, of the like short strings. <laughs> Yeah, not cool. I will just use the staccato here. I will follow a simple melody and that would be it could do just well. <laughs> yeah, longer notes maybe also. I will I will try it. I'll just copy and paste this melody. with something at least Yeah, long strings right there. Golden strings? Ah, London strings. I'll, I will stay in the cellos one. Let's see how this sounds. I will just, you know, enough of these strings. I will just follow this melody. Let me try one more thing. I will mm, close the second 
FL Studio and I will load a contact 5 and I will show you the low brass uh, that I was speaking about. Yeah, sure, I know it that, that the messages are delayed. I'm keeping it in mind. Uh, yeah, I'll go to this. Um, I'll be on three and I will click this brass low. I believe I saved the project uh, before I loaded this, this contact five because uh, there's a pretty big chance that it will make the FL Studio crash, but let's try it. Uh, yes. Yes. F. Not or F. He <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And right now I will also add another harmonic in there and that would be um G sharp. Let's go. Cool. So uh right now I have this um uh, I have this low brass right here that is playing. I will automate it for sure. I will probably use filter again, not a volume envelope. And I will also add, um, I mean, why is FL Studio creating these automations over over audio clips? It's weird. It didn't, uh, it wasn't like that in the previous versions of FL Studio, but never mind. I will, I will filter it. Can you change backup settings so it would change before risky operation? Yeah, I have this this auto save already set it properly. I will now like uh, put our first this cellos without the high notes and after that I will also put there the high notes so it's still like uh, you know there are still some elements added to the orchestral type of sound I'm just you know playing these simple F notes here uh, what I will also do is I will put another um, reverb on the brass sounds because they have to be reverb pretty pretty heavy. Yeah, I will I will show you the full full song. I just want to finish this section because I'm tired of it, of it already. <laughs> to you in just a few minutes don't worry I also will uh, automate the volume of these strings so that they will go from from 
lower volume and it will build up slowly. Just like that, you know, using the fruity balance. I love this plugin. <laughs> this is my favorite one from internal uh, effects by FL Studio. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's take a small break and I will now play you the whole track together. How long uh, have you made this project? I mean, uh, I was creating it live. This is the first, this is the fourth um, live stream that I'm creating the track. I was just checking the time I spent on it and it looks like five and a half hour. That's about it. Uh, you can see the me creating the track from, from basically nothing. If you will go to my uh, YouTube channel or WA Production, or, or if you uh, will just watch my videos on Twitch and you will see how I created everything in this project. So, uh, playing right now. Yeah, uh, cool, right? It sounds very nice. I mean, I, I lowered these uh, reversed effects uh, that, that uh, as, as you wrote me to do. Um, right is too loud, okay. I will make the right uh, lower, this one and also the other one. Any other suggestions? Also, uh, Tommy Tots wrote me that, and he was right that um, this this effect was sidechain because I, I 
forgot to turn off the sidechain effect. Thank you. Thank you. Really glad you, you like it, guys. You know, it's awesome that uh, I was able to create a nice tune during a live stream. <laughs> I'm always so worried that I will create just, you know, something that will sound, you know, bad. And, uh, but it sounds quite good. Uh, Sidechain, some with noise in the drop. Uh, with a 3x oscillator. I mean, there is already enough of white noise. Let me check it. Yeah, I have to fix this rhythm of these synth, of these like extra synths, and that will be, I guess, the last uh, improvement. Um, try this way, just so it fits with the rhythm of the lead synth. So yes, uh, we are we are closing or we are getting closer to the end of the producing part of stream. Uh, feedback session is just in in like ten minutes. Right now, I will do a quick master. Uh, I'm not a mastering engineer. I'm I'm but still I'm mastering tracks. So uh, if you want like anything, I will create right now. Just uh, let me know, but. You know that's the way I am mastering tracks. I will just show it to you right now. So um, first thing first, first things first. Turn off the sidechain when the bass only is playing. Okay, that's a great idea. I will, I will do that. I will do it just as a final step. Thank you, uh, FL Studio Twelve. <laughs> this volume shaper plugin and turning off this oh it has to be on the whole time but only I will turn it off for this short part Damn. that was a great idea thank you for it man oops and turn it off turned off uh, you're welcome you are really welcome I, I super enjoy these live streams believe me so yeah I will just you know select the loudest part of the track and I will mix that or I will uh, loop it and I will master that part of the track because I feel like uh, if you really you know you have to just squash the track the loudest part as, as you can so uh, that way uh, you won't be surprised where, where, when it was, you know, if, if I would be like mastering this part of the drop, so and I, I would do like the maximum power, I will add the maximum like frequency spectrum and power and loudness and er everything. And then when this, this, you know, even louder part will come, it could sound distorted and everything. So I'm always mastering the, or I, I always loop the loudest part of the track and then I applied all of these effects and uh, it it always or it usually sounds well also on the other part of the tracks. Yeah, my CPU is going burn, but still it's way better than the last time. Believe me. I mean, 
yeah but it, it will burn for sure <laughs> um switch disable for all and let's let's get to it I'm just checking if there are any like unwanted frequencies that are really uh, not nice to hear. It sounds pretty clear, that's cool. I also cut it off these uh, really low frequencies that, uh, you know, when I, when I moved like that low, I, I still couldn't hear the change if I go, if I will go upper and I will feel like the bass is going off i will i will just go back you know i don't want any of these like hearable frequencies to go out from my mix so uh just like that and right now there are a few tools to do it uh for example this um you know what i will do it with this isotope ozone 5 imager i will just turn on these uh stereo stereos and i will turn down this uh width of the of the low band really really like minus 100 percent and what's also a great tool and a friend of my uh, a friend of mine sent it to me actually the creator of this plugin and it's called where it is um come on noise lab or something or mastering suite where are you oh here it is step one monomizer this is a mastering suite of uh that con that consists of seven seven plugins, and I really I'm really using only the first one, and uh, this allows you to cut off some of the low frequencies, but also make the low frequencies mono. You can just solo it, the part that you are mono, like creating mono or making mono, just like that. And by this mono mice button, you can you know make it mono. And I really want my bass sounds to be mono. You shouldn't rely on mastering to make it sound loud though, right? That's what I've heard. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. But as, as you probably hear and as I hope uh, you hear, uh, the song sounds, you know, good. So the only thing right now is that I will make it louder. But uh, that's the only thing I'm able to do with, with the master mastering. I mean, get rid of some of the fr unwanted frequencies, but there are none in, in, in the track. And that is caused by good mixing you know I, I used a lot of plugins on on all of these bus channels so right now i'm only like uh do the final touches as you can see i'm uh getting rid of i'm getting rid of the low frequencies i'm monomizing i mean it should there shouldn't be any low frequencies but in case of there still are some of these when i like forgot to cut off some of the claps or whatever uh i'm putting it on the master channel but it sounds also good in my opinion. It sounds very nice also without the master without these mastering plugins. I'm just making it, you know, very squishing it make, and making it louder. Uh, what I'm using as a next step, how much costs this all plugins you can buy a car from this money? <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. That that's probably yeah, yeah. But uh I'm not using all of them. I have to uh clean a bit uh, my 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 plugins because for example these vengeance producing producer suite ones i'm not using at all the only one i'm using is this uh vps scope that is actually for free so i just you know spend money on really like useless plugins because i don't like these i mean uh there is one that is kind of well kind of good but i'm not sure which one it was but they are they are eating so much of cpu they are so delayed i really don't like these vengeance plugins they, they do not they don't do a good job so this is vps scope is kind of cool kind of cool though how much did i invest i mean a lot of a lot of money man a lot of but also i i got some back you know from from producing from packs and everything so uh I have no idea how much you know i'm buying pack or a plugin from time to time as and as i already mentioned you know it uh i'm producing for nine years i i also bought this like ableton you know so i have it officially but still 
uh, I'm not using it or I'm using it like once a month or something like that so uh, yeah back to the mastering stuff uh, this UAD uh, thing is, is awesome I'm using it it's hard to get this plugin because you have to buy yourself a sound card you know a hard drive sound card not a software one but uh, it's worth, worth it uh, for me at least did I say 19 years? I meant nine, yeah. That would be, I would be producing for my five years <laughs> that way. Uh, so here is a preset that I'm like using, but still I have to tweak it a lot. So let's just, you know, play it and see. Sorry. These high frequencies are good. I'm not compressing them much usually. I'm really I'm really not compressing these I'm really not like compressing much uh, these frequencies by this multiband but I'm I'm just doing little tweaks I'm compressing it slightly as so you will see on the, on the visualization of this plugin but it's doing a nice job so let's see most important band to me is this one it's around 140 hertz to like 250 hertz that's the bass when the bass like kicks it's not a sub bass frequencies or the spectrum the frequency part of the spectrum part of the frequency spectrum but it's very important to me because this gives the your sound the pumpy feeling you know the last thing I, I do here I mean I hope you you can hear at least some difference because I can hear just a slightly one but it's there and the, the last thing I do here is that I increase the output level so the, the like output gain is plus or is, is around 8 to 9 to 10 dB then I'm limiting it and the last step in my in my mastering chain is this even horizon it's a plugin that uh, makes your sound clips just slightly uh, I saw this tutorial by Dennis Groove they are using this plugin and it's really cool I mean uh, if you will set this uh, like ceiling to minus uh, 0 0.3 dB and then just slightly turn down this threshold and turn down this soft clip you will get some extra power to your to your track and that's really cool and this plugin is for free uh, I have it re registered because I didn't know it, <laughs> so I ha I paid for it. But then I realized when I uh, read the F F -N -Q F F A Q section, then it's for free. Uh, but when you when you purchase it, uh, you've you you you've got this like thank you message each time you open it. But you you will be able to use it for free. So be sure to to at least check out this plugin. It's called Even Horizon. It's made by Stillwell, something like that, and as, as a last step in your mastering chain is doing a pretty good job
So, cool. Uh, consider it as a master track. <laughs> master track. Uh, this is just the way I'm mastering. But obviously, you know, guys, if you really have the best chart in your like year, you know, in a year, if you have some really amazing track that you believe will be accepted on a big channel, do not master it by your own. Uh, find a mastering studio. Uh, here is this mastering studio that, that uh, works for spinning. It's called Wired Mastering. Wired Mastering. Google it and see. And if you will really believe that um, this track will be signed, or, or even if the label answer to you that the track has to be mastered better, go to the Wired Mastering Studios or even send, send it to us, you know, to double a production mastering section and uh, leave this on, on the mastering guys because even though I'm producing for quite a lot, you know, a long time, not the longest one, but quite a lot, I'm, uh, and I believe all of you, uh, we are concentrate, concentrate ourselves and our skills on producing but not on mastering and the mastering is a completely different section of of uh, of the sound designing you know so uh, this is just like childish play for these guys in, in mastering studios uh, I mean it's, it's doing a good job but still uh, there are mastering studios they are using hardware stuff uh, and uh, you know you, you just cannot do it by yourself most of the time but uh, for like SoundCloud free releases and I'm I'm not saying also for big big labels sometimes but uh, uh, don't believe these guys like Avicii like Martin Garrix that they are mastering their their tracks by by themselves because uh, yeah the WA master WA mastering costs like 30 euros it's quite cheap uh, but yeah don't believe these guys that they are mastering their tracks by, by themselves because uh, they are not, you know. I saw this tutorial by Martin Garrix and he was like, yeah, well, then I put this Isotope Ozone on my mastering channel. I, I select this house basic preset and I'm good. You know, he's not. He, he bounces all of these stems. He send it to Wired Mastering Studios. They master it, send it back to, uh, back to him and then he releases it. That's, that's, that's all, you know. I also saw this uh, tutorial by Sander von Dorn, it was crazy. So uh, yeah, all of these guys are sending it to big labels because uh, big mastering studios. Yeah, if you think it's not that hard that, you know, why not? If you, if you can do it by yourself, then you are, you are really great. But uh, in my opinion, you cannot get that sound as, as these guys from from the big mastering studios uh, which are doing it for like 20 years or 30 or I don't know uh, there is a guy for every nation channel yeah sure so uh, yeah it's like that uh, let me master it right there uh, sorry <laughs> let me let me bounce it right now the whole track and save it first and uh, we will take a listen to it after and right now I will I will open my Google Chrome finally so switch EDM done uh, MB3 yes did I sound like Martin? Yeah. Yeah, spending 100 bucks on on track to make it sound slightly better. That's not it, you know. That was that 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 is why I was saying that you really uh, should use these mastering studios only on your best charts, not on each of your track, because that would you know kill your kill your budget. But only like once per, per year when you really make this like big track you know that could change the, that could change your career it worth uh, spending that extra money on it not on each track uh, but uh, only on those really special ones because I believe you know what I mean right which yeah here we go 
Let me check if someone is watching me also on YouTube. I mean, while bouncing this uh, this track, we will listen to it, and after that, I will listen to some pre to some tracks. Yeah, cool, cool. So.